Hello and welcome back to Professional Tutors, the British Online School. We are a unique team of qualified and dedicated teachers here to help our students to reach their full potential. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about alkanes. Uh, we'll look at the structure of alkanes. Uh, then we'll discuss about the properties, uh, the physical properties of alkanes. Uh, we'll talk about the chemical properties of alkanes. We talk about breaking covalent bonds. We talk about chlorination um, of methane via free radical substitution. And that is going to be your a guaranteed exam question. Uh, they are going to ask you lots of questions um, from free radical substitution. Then we talk about cracking. That's going to be your one or two mark question in exam, and that's it really. So let's talk one by one. So before we move on, it would be a good idea just to recall what um, is a covalent bond. Um, it's just the covalent bond um, which is there because of the sharing of electrons. So a uh, covalent bond is, is because of the sharing or when the atoms they come together, they share electrons, uh, they form covalent bond. Uh, you should be able to balance simple chemical equations um, and should be able to write the, the structure of um, simple hydrocarbons. You should be able to write the structure of methane, ethane, at least first six um, alkanes. You should be able to write the formula and draw the structure of first six alkanes. Right, so we all know that from GCSEs, um, or year 10, year 11, the journal formula for alkanes is CNH2N plus two, and they're non-cyclic alkanes. Now, what are cyclic alkanes, or what are cyclic hydrocarbons? We will discuss that later on. Um, they're also saturated hydrocarbons. Now, what does that mean? All carbon-carbon bonds, they're all single bonds. They don't have a double bond or a triple bond. So alkanes, there is a single bond between carbon and a carbon atom, and they are called saturated. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll talk about alkenes, where there is at least one a uh, double bond between carbon and carbon atom. And we're gonna say that alkenes are going to be unsaturated. So unsaturated, at least one carbon and carbon double bond. And if the hydrocarbon is a saturated hydrocarbon, they're going to be all the bonds between carbon and carbon atoms are going to be single bonds. And there's something called structural isomerism. Now, if you look at butane and 2-methylpropane, the formula for both of these compounds or hydrocarbons are going to be C4H10. You can count the number of carbon atoms is four in both of them. Count the number of hydrogen atoms uh, is going to be 10 in both of them. So they've got the same molecular formula but the structures are different. So structural isomers, isomers, they have the same molecular formula, which is C4H10 in these, both of them, uh, but they have got different structural formulas. That's going to be a one or two mark definition in exam. What are structural uh, isomers? The structural isomers, isomers, they have got the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Um, and they also have different physical properties such as boiling point, uh, melting point, and density. So let's have a look at the physical properties of alkanes. Let's look at the boiling point. All you need to remember from, for your exams, as the number of carbon atoms um, in a chain increases, the boiling point or melting point increases. So as the molecule will become bigger and bigger and bigger, the boiling point, point increases. Also, 
it depends on whether uh, the hydrocarbon or an alkane is a straight chain alkane or branched alkane. If it is straight chain, they're closely packed, they're more points of contact, they have got greater vendable forces, greater all different types of interactions, they're all um, greater in a straight chain molecule. So straight chain molecules, they have greater interaction than branched. And just remember, you, what you have to remember for your exams, the greater the branching, the lower the boiling point. So straight chain alkanes, they have a higher boiling point than the branched chain alkanes. So when it comes to melting point, it's more or less the same trend, but it's not that um, regular um, as compared to boiling points. Um, so general increase with molecular mass, what does that mean? It's the same thing uh, as the size of the molecule increase, as the size of an alkane increases, uh, the melting point increases as well. But don't worry about that. They're not gonna ask you questions in exam on this. It's less likely. Now this is really important, one mark multiple choice question or one or two mark um, descriptive question. Solubility, very important. Alkanes are non-polar. And as we know that like dissolves like, we know water is polar molecule because water is polar, alkanes are non-polar. They are not going to dissolve in water. So alkanes, they are non-polar, so they are immiscible with water, but they are soluble in most other organic solvents. So remember this thing, like dissolves like. So breaking covalent bonds, now uh, this is really, really important for this topic. Um, that there are three, three ways um, a covalent bond can break. Uh, in an unsymmetrical, um, if the molecules are unsymmetrical or the atoms are unsymmetrical, the bond is unsymmetrical. One way is unequal splitting. So the bond will either break from this end or this end. If that's the case, the X will have both electrons and the charge on X is going to be negative and the charge on Y is going to be positive. If this is the case, the Y will have both electrons, the Y will have negative charge, and X will have a positive charge. Now this type of fission or breaking of bond is called heterolytic fission or heterolytic fission, whatever you want to say it. So heterolytic or heterolytic or heterolysis or heterolysis, your choice. And, and when, when there is heterolytic fission, the products are going to be the ions. You will get positive ions, you got negative ions. Now this is very important bit, which we'll discuss in detail in the coming slides. The bond could break right from the middle. So that in this case, X will have its own electron. There'll be no charge. The Y will have its own electrons and there'll be no charge. This type of fission or breaking of a covalent bond, which is right from the middle, is called homolysis a homolytic fission. And the products of homolytic fission, they are radicals or free radicals. Now there is a big uh, question, a very important question, which will be asked in exam. Uh, we will discuss that in the coming slides. So free radicals or radicals. Um, so when is heterolytic fission, the results are ions. When it's homolytic fission, uh, the result, uh, the, uh, that will result into the formation of radicals. The typical properties of um, free radicals, uh, they are reactive species. Uh, they are either atoms or they're the group of atoms uh, which contain or which possess an unpaired electrons. And the reactivity of a free radical is because of that unpaired electron, because they want to pair up with someone. The reactivity is due to them wanting to pair up the single electron. Uh, they're formed by homolytic fission. Very important exam question. Homolytic um, fission. 
when the covalent bond uh, breaks right in the middle. Um, they form during the reaction between chlorine and methane. Now that is a very important uh, exam question they're gonna ask, one of the most important question in all of this topic. Uh, we're gonna discuss that in the coming slides. Uh, they're formed during thermal cracking and they're involved in reactions taking place in the ozone layer. Now when we discuss uh, chlorine, the reaction between chlorine and methane, we also discuss the ozone layer depletion. What is the role of chlorine gas or methane gas in the depletion of ozone layer? Free radical substitution, that's one of the most important questions from this topic. Uh, we've just discussed what is a free radical. So free radicals, um, these are the atoms, a group of atoms with unpaired electrons. Now in this reaction, in this bottle, we've got a mixture of chlorine gas and methane gas. And when you show UV light on the reaction mixture, uh, this a reaction mixture will undergo free radical substitution reaction. There are three main steps in this reaction. The first one is initiation, the second one is propagation, and the third one is termination. So let's have a look uh, at them one by one. The first step, when the chlorine and the chlorine bond, the bond between chlorine and chlorine atom, it undergoes homolytic fission, that's the key word, homolytic fission, the bond breaks right in the middle and each chlorine atom will have its own electron. That will form chlorine free radicals. And then you've got lots and lots and lots of chlorine free radicals there. Next is propagation. What's happening here? A chlorine free radical, it reacts with methane molecule. It removes the hydrogen and will get a methyl free radical. So a chlorine free radical uh, reacts with methane to give hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, plus a methyl free radical. Now propagation two, the methyl free radical will react with chlorine gas. And again, it's going to be a homolytic fission. And what we'll get, we'll get even more chlorine free radicals. So in this step, a methyl free radical reacts with chlorine gas. And we will get a chlorine free radical plus a haloalkane or chloromethane uh, or methyl chloride. Now to stop this reaction, we have to get rid of all the free radicals. One way of getting rid of the free radical is the chlorine free radical will react with a methyl free radical to form chloromethane. That's one way of getting rid of chlorine free radical and a methyl free radical. Another way of getting rid of free radicals is a chlorine free radical combined with or reacts with another chlorine free radical and you get chlorine gas. Or one more way of getting rid of free radicals from this reaction is a methyl free radical uh, will react with another methyl free radical and you will get ethane. So overall, these are the steps which are involved in free radical substitution reaction. Initiation, propagation, propagation one, propagation two, then termination one, termination two, and termination three. Now we have just learned the free radical substitution reaction, um, the mechanism of that reaction. And the reaction we've just studied was a reaction between uh, chlorine gas and methane gas. Now let's have a look how um, this reaction is linked to the destruction of ozone layer. 
Now, the destruction of ozone layer involves the, the exactly the same mechanism, same reaction, which is free radical substitution reaction. Now we've got CFCs, which are chlorofluorocarbons. They react with ozone in the upper atmosphere. So just have a look what actually happens. Now, ozone is a gas, which is O3. So what is happening up in the atmosphere? Oxygen molecules, they absorb UV uh, and they split into two oxygen free radicals. Then the oxygen gas, O2, reacts with oxygen free radical to give us ozone. And ozone will absorb UV and split into oxygen free radical and oxygen gas. The reaction that makes ozone and the reaction that destroys ozone naturally occur at more or less the same speed. So the concentration of ozone, which is O3, remains more or less the same. There's never been a problem. The problem starts when we start releasing CFCs in the environment. So CFC, which is chlorofluorocarbons, they absorb UV light up there in the atmosphere. And that will give us, or that will lead to the production of chlorine free radical. So CFCs, which is chlorofluorocarbons, they remain intact, they don't break down until they reach the upper atmosphere. That is where the real problem starts. So up air in the atmosphere, they absorb UV radiation, which leads to the formation of chlorine free radical. And that is where the real trouble is. So chlorine free radical will react with ozone and breaks it down, destroys it. The chlorine free radical reacts with ozone, split that into ClO negative free radical plus oxygen. Now the ClO free radical destroys even more ozone. So ClO negative reacts further with ozone to give us chlorine free radical and oxygen. The ClO radical reacts with another ozone forming oxygen and another chlorine radical. And that is a chain reaction because that gives us this and this gives us this. So the reaction is ongoing, it's a chain reaction. So one chlorine radical can destroy thousands of ozone molecules. And that is what leads to the destruction of ozone layer. Thanks for watching. If you find the information useful, please subscribe, share and like the video.